Wild Dirt Cryptid Investigations. Today is a good day. I am on my way down to southeastern Oklahoma to an area that I've referred to in the past as Xanadu. And we've been down there several times, but it's been a while. I am excited to be going back. Uh, Eric and Coleman are joining me. Hopefully they better show up. I don't want to be out there alone. But no, seriously. This place always has activity, and so I'm kind of pumped up. We're going to be down there for several days, and hopefully we can do a little bit of exploring and maybe uh, have some interactions. So I'll bring you guys with me. Uh, when I get there, I'll show you around, and maybe uh, maybe we'll get to see some pretty stuff. <laughs> if I don't crash. Uh. Now, no trip to southeastern Oklahoma would be complete without a trip to Tallahanna and the Bigfoot Museum. I always have to try to stop in and visit with Tanya. have made it doesn't look like much but this is going to be home for the night yeah we're gonna because it's gonna rain you may hear thunder but uh we're gonna try to string a tarp up and over so that we can have some dry spots here What do you think? Ominous? Oh, here comes the rain. Woo, doggies! People don't believe this stuff unless you video it. Oh, oh yeah, this is the shit.
our tarp actually ended up blowing on, but we survived. Eventually, the squall line went on through, and we went to sleep. We were pretty tired. To the moon! The next morning was wonderful. We got up, broke camp, and we ended up relocating to a better campsite. And we did a little exploring that day. Well, what do you think, Coleman? Is it natural? Kind of has a dome shape to it, someone's to it. Is that twisted? It looks like it's twisted. And it is. Dude, that's that's possible. Uh, you know, it's old though, you know. But uh I agree. Hard to tell. Damn, that's high up. This is an interesting little water hole. Ooh. It may be down in the Washita's, but apparently it's still Oklahoma. Dig that wind. Cattle for poo. That actually looks surprisingly deep. Gentlemen, you might want to come take a look at this. I got a very old footprint. It's old. I don't see a trail. 
track way, but that is definitely a footprint. Hard to say whether that's a human footprint or not. For sure. Yeah. It's bigger than your foot. Oh, yeah. That still could be a human footprint. Huh. Interesting. I don't, there's no trackway to speak of. Well, oh, he's going underground. Yeah, watch for a rodent to come out. Holy <laughs> shit, We stumbled upon this mysterious fur. We kind of assumed it was bear fur, although we cannot confirm nor deny. Coleman found this great print. You could actually see where the dirt had been squeezed up in between the toes. All right, well, the sun is going down and we are in the Washita National Forest. We are Deploying some new tactics this time, okay? We uh, decided that we would uh, put some visual stimulation out for them. We've got, uh, Eric has got 100 episodes of SpongeBob Square Plant Pants set up on um, <laughs> Auto Rewind. We're hoping that they'll be tempted to come up over the hill and get within viewing distance so that they can uh, take a look. And um, so Eric's van, you may have may have noticed, has uh, surveillance cameras on it, okay? He's got one up here facing the front. And he's got one here watching this direction. And... He's got another one over here that's watching on the back uh, across the uh, the creek here. I think I think that's it. Oh no, he's got another one. He's got four total, and this one's watching this direction. So, and can you tell us anything about your your video surveillance system? Well, I just have it. It's all here, portable. It, 
it's all 12 volt yeah it, uh constant recording uh-huh looks like night it's vision got a couple of color ones and a couple of black and white no ones. these just transfer to night vision these are still oh i guess there's too much light on there oh i see uh daylight and what do you have to run your vehicle while this is uh going no i have an independent battery down okay. here and do you just, have to uh, have internet for any of this nope all right it's all self-contained well here let's let's see what happens here uh, 50 amp hour battery right. uh, switches here that i got usb ports uh -huh. 12 volt and then uh that's your fuse hub isn't it? fuse hub i made right and what is this thing that's that's the uh dvr that's the dvr okay sweet sweet well hopefully we draw them in we just did like a little um call a uh, call blast we were very very short and uh hopefully we didn't uh give them too much with the call blast to figure out that we were not legitimate but we figure they will probably come in along one of these two ridge lines and maybe eventually work their way down closer and hopefully crawl into coleman's tent <laughs> <laughs> Now, on our second night out there, we decided we were going to try some call blasting of music. We were playing some funky little tunes that I can't play for copyright reasons. And then we kind of let everything kind of settle down and we hung out around the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's just a lot of things you have to uh keep in mind when you're walking is the looking out for the glimmer man tree breaks tree structures footprints yeah it's easy to overlook things if you have it if you're focused enough you know like mm -hmm. hunters or you're going out to hunt deer you're focused on looking for deer one thing that's all yeah Right. Speaking of that Glimmer Man thing, do you know that David Wilbanks has a report of a Glimmer creature, predator type creature over by northeast of Tulsa? Yeah, he did. I mean, I don't know that he followed up on it or went out to the scene or anything, but he did have a report. Does he have like a database or something online? Uh, no, he's got that Bigfoot and more um, YouTube channel, and uh, he'll he just basically reads his uh, aloud on his channel there, so that that's that's his method of sharing. Oh, I gotcha. And uh, if you, he used to have a, a website back in the day, but it's no longer up and functioning. So, but anyway. I do not have any Glimmer Man reports, and uh, I prefer to keep it that way. But, you know, there's some interesting videos out there on the Internet. And these, these Glimmer Man things, these pixelated, pre that'd be pretty tough to fake, don't you think? I would think so. Maybe put a drop of water on the lens of the camera or something? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not a certified hoaxer. So, with my degree in hoaxing. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if there's any, maybe if any of the subscribers know how to hoax something like that with precision, they could let us know. But yeah, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, we did we found that one Coleman found that one footprint, which at first didn't look like anything. But when you got down and you actually looked at it, um, that sucker 
had like the the mud was like worked up between the toes and there was little ridges there yeah. if i can remember i'll try to throw that photo in the video at this point so that people can see it But that was that was a. I think that was a pretty solid track, honestly. It really was, and the proportions on it, you know, being fifty percent as wide as it is long, that was that was on on spot. It wasn't a large one. It was only like I don't know nine inches long. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get the tape out for it or anything, but and that we were way out there. Yeah, we were. That was. Um, it was a pretty good journey we took today. Good exercise. I don't think that I've ever found any, like, structures out here. But I have found um, a couple of years ago, and I, I don't, whenever we first started coming out here, at that other location where we first camped, um, there were three great big huge pine trees that were pushed over into other trees at like a 45 degree angle and they were like perfectly spaced like a hundred feet apart and they were all pointing the exact same direction and Jeff Hatfield was one that noticed that I don't know if that was something or not it was just really weird looking but um if there are as many different groups of Bigfoot in this area as what people seem to think there is, you would think that there would be more, you know, territory markers or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Was there anything significant where the, the trees were pointing at? Like in that direction? Was there... I don't know. We didn't go that direction. Mm -hmm. And look, I mean, you could stand, you could go up to the road, and you could, you could look. Honestly, they, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, it kind of pointed here. That's interesting. I don't know. Do you see something? There's a lot of possums around here. Yeah, they don't travel far either. He's just he's still in the same area. Yeah, internet trolls are not cryptids. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, generally, I think they're uh, people who've never stepped foot in the forest or made a valiant effort to mm -hmm. be observant in the forest. and. Yeah. Watch where you step. Listen to where you go. I think it's going to get worse. And I'm going to... I'm going to do a little negativity of my own here. You know, every Monday... You know, I'm a teacher. Every Monday, I always ask my guys, Well, what would you guys do this weekend? And basically... If there's 15 guys in there, maybe one of them actually did something that weekend. Their their weekends consist of staying at home, playing video games, and screaming at their mom to get them a hot pocket. <laughs> I mean, they don't do anything. And so, what do you what you got is you got a bunch of young men that have never really been out to a place like this. You know, here we are. We're out in the middle of the national forest. I mean. You know, earlier, we were talking about, you know, leaving, and and you guys were like, well, we're leaving when you're leaving, and I was like, why? And like, because we don't know we can find our way out. <laughs> and and it, this place is that big, yeah. you know? And the sad part is, you've only seen a tiny portion of it. This place is massive. I mean, I'm about to imagine that this national forest is bigger than Tulsa and Oklahoma City metro areas put together. It's, it's absolutely massive, but people don't know that. And, and it amazes me how these broad, broad spectrum skeptics are like, oh, there's no way Bigfoot don't live in the, 
Have, have you ever been out here and seen all the room? Yeah. I mean, it's something's living out here, okay. you know. I, I, there's just so much. And then you go to some place like Colorado to the Rio Grande National Forest or, you know, San Juan or, or you know, and it's just like those are even bigger. Yeah. You know, people don't realize. But this whole thing, this all this negativity is has gotten old. We've got these, you know, I guess I'll say it, hoaxer pages. And I'm not, well, first and foremost, I think it's, I think it's necessary. I think what they're doing is necessary because, oh, goodness, it's smoke. I think it's necessary because I think hoaxers need to be called out. But it's just like we can just, you could throw anybody's name into that that little chat forum or whatever and I mean they just tear them down I mean they just tear them down and it I mean if, if Jesus Christ saw a Bigfoot and they they would just tear them apart you know and uh, it just kind of cracks me up I was on one the other day and I thought it was kind of funny but they were like, oh, so-and-so has seen five different Bigfoots or whatever. And these people are like, oh, that's impossible. He's a hoaxer. Anybody that's seen more than one in their lifetime is a hoaxer. It's like, what? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that have seen more than one, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what happens if uh, you happen to see a family of four? Right. Are you automatically a, a hoaxer because you saw four at one time? I mean, come on. But the thing is, is where's your proof? You know, if you're going to call somebody a liar, I think the burden of proof suddenly becomes on you. I, you should prove that. Yeah. And they don't do that. They, they don't offer anything but negativity. And I think that hoaxers should be called out, but they should be done so with a higher level of professionalism mm -hmm. and and just basically um you know just some more common sense and some some actual logic involved other than just jumping up and down like a three-year-old and screaming hoaxer i mean it's horseshit if you ain't got you know the act the common sense or the intelligence to prove them to be a hoaxer then shut up you, you got nothing. You got nothing to offer. Yeah. And at least that's that's my two cents worth. And uh, but the sad thing is, is people they want to look at a picture and just pass judgment and move on. They don't want to spend any time investigating, doing any kind of research. I mean, that's that would require effort, and they're not going to put that in. But if you need to realize, if you're not willing to put in the effort and you're not going to read and look into this, you need to keep your mouth shut. And I'm not trying to be, you know, peckerhead here, but you're the one that's being lazy. Yeah. You need to keep your mouth shut. You don't have, if you're not going to step up to bat and do your homework, you don't, you really shouldn't have the right to open your mouth, but the internet is going to give you that no matter what. I'm going to make a noise.
lot of times right before we get ready to go to bed, we will make a video of how everything is set out. That way, if anything gets tampered with, we will have actual evidence. gets messed with we'll know it we ended up going to bed but we didn't have anything happen that night we think maybe it was because Eric was running the surveillance system this is a matriarch tree this thing is old I say this thing is like five foot around at the base well as you can see the Spongebob video is something definitely to see and it's it's actually project you can't really see it but it's projecting a lot of light you recording mm -hmm. So, I've been thinking about for a while, kind of when you look over the, the research community, or just in general, the, the field or whatever you want to talk about, especially online and everything, mm -hmm. is on both ends of the spectrum, because everything's on a spectrum, and usually... From my experience, the truth and the right way to go about certain things is kind of in the middle. Yeah. And I think the same holds for Sasquatch research and how you how you do things. And there's obviously a lot of issues, a lot of things that in general people that we all could do better. And I was thinking to myself like how is that like what are the things that in general as a community we can do better and how that fits on the spectrum and I think people go wrong is they either go too far on one end of the spectrum and other people go too far on the other end of the spectrum and there's no balance in anything so you have people who lean on one end of the spectrum which in my experience is sometimes being overly skeptical of everything not being open-minded to it's also lazy lazy mm -hmm. um like i said being overly skeptical ignoring things that could be something um as, right. if, as if that's a virtue in any way in their research calling everything fake we still got people that are calling Patterson Gimlin film fake. Yeah. And they think, and I, and I, in a way, there's good in it because obviously it's good to be skeptical in a sense because on the other end of the spectrum, which I think is just as bad. Being gullible. <laughs> being gullible, believing everything you see, seeing things that aren't there. Obviously, what's notorious in, unfortunately, in. I think the online communities whether it be Facebook or whatever and I think people mean well 100% I think people they're good people they mean well but the whole blob squats the whole pareidolia pareidolia matrixing whatever people want to call it in because the issue is people see that who are outsiders looking in maybe they've had an encounter maybe they're just interested in the field mm-hmm and they go and they join these pages, and what are they going to think? Of, yeah. You know, when they, they see stuff like that. Right. They're gonna if think, they're on the fence and they see people presenting that as evidence, yeah, I could see that. I, just, I could see that turning people away from it. Yeah. Because people already think we're nuts, you know? People already think. Like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> like my family, too. Right. And. We don't help ourselves, and I'm not saying we need to sit here and beg for the approval, because I think that goes on the opposite end of the spectrum again, is people who think that 
we need to get the approval of the scientific community and this, that, the other, because I think there's well enough evidence out there to show objectively that these creatures, whatever they are, exist. They're real. I agree. And so... I mean, we found evidence today. It's not hard to find. No, you just no. really got to get off your damn ass and go, sorry, guys. You got to get off your ass and go get it yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get on a tirade here. So I've been posting some photos lately on TikTok and some YouTube shorts about some footprints and and showing some, some footprints online. And... People just don't know what the hell they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they get on there and they start running their mouths and they're like, well, this is this, this is that. You're just looking at a picture of the footprint. You know, you're not really looking at the whole context. And uh, the, the context of where that footprint is is more important than the footprint almost. Mm -hmm. Because, <clears throat> you know, you think about it, what percent of Bigfoot tracks are over um, 13 inches? You know, mm -hmm. not not a whole lot of them. I mean, probably the lion's share you find are going to be within human uh, sizes. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, pa uh, Patty from the Patterson Demo, her, um, her foot uh, is 14 inches long, okay? My foot is 11 inches long. That's really that not, it's not, I mean, her foot's a big ass foot, but it's not that much bigger than mine. And, and, uh, I, I guess what kind of what I'm getting at is, is we got this, this whole batch of people that really have never taken time to do any type of research. I mean, they don't even know how many inches their foot is. All they know is they wear a size nine. Yeah. You know, they have no idea what's normal for human proportions, what's not. They don't even understand the whole 50% of the length ratio thing. They don't understand the stride length or they don't understand none of that stuff. They, and they, th oh, either that or they think that every time a Bigfoot takes a step, it's at least 48 inches or it's a human. You know, maybe they just not in a big hurry. Exactly. You know, but... They take all this stuff, and they don't even know where the photo was taken, okay? We've got a barefoot photo taken in freaking February out in the middle of a WMA where there's sticks, thorny vines, all kinds of shit that puncture the dog. Excuse Frozen me. ground. <laughs> Frozen ground out in the middle, and we're, you know, we're a mile, mile and a half in there. And we're finding barefoot footprints. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit how big they are? Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, six inches long or 16 inches long. That is not a regular human. It's more about the context. Exactly. But see, here's the funny thing, though, is, is if I post a picture and I show this, and then you got other people that are coming in. It's like, oh, horse shit, whatever, you know, and I probably shouldn't be talking like that. But they get in there and they, they're running their mouth and they're they're spewing all this negativity. And then some outside person comes in and they're like, oh, well, dang, I've got this picture, this Bigfoot print, and it's only, you know, 15 inches long. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not. If this is what happens when you post your photos, I'm not going to post it. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to, you know, just quietly let this go away. You know, so this, all this negativity is, is like you said, it's, it's bringing the whole, the whole community down. Yeah, the negativity is, I think, probably top three uh, worst things about the online community is... People, grown adults, do not know how to communicate in a respectful manner to other people, you know? No, half the time, if you said that stuff to somebody's face, they'd punch you in the mouth. Yeah. It's like, so, like, when I did my documentary and I released it, you know, there was a lot of people who were very 
they emailed us and they're very respectable and obviously when we did that and we released it you know months 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 later i mean i knew when we released it this stupid stuff that we did and what we did wrong and i wish obviously i could go back in time but i was learning at that point like that first investigation and that we did in the documentary that was for us three me montana hayden that was the first time we had ever done that ever been bigfoot researching whatever all, right. all we knew was the stuff we saw on tv with finding bigfoot we thought that's what you were supposed to do we thought you go in the woods <laughs> yeah. you scream and howl you find branches and we thought that's how you're supposed to do it well i mean seriously i mean that's probably what most people think yeah and luckily there's people and obviously we already knew this at this point but there's people who understood that and understood that kind of like the main theme of the documentary was three people going into this for the first time and learning and talking to researchers, mm -hmm. talking to witnesses, whatever, and learning as newbies to this whole thing of how to get into this and how to yeah. be a better researcher. Which they would have known if they had read the description, probably. Yeah, or just watched it or just, you know, just been open-minded about what they're seeing. But instead, and there's some people who recognize that and said, hey, you know, my personal advice would be, you know, to do this, maybe look at this, you know, maybe not use the trail cams because the IR, all that stuff. And Yeah, really constructive criticism. Constructive criticism on how to improve and how to be better, how to be a better researcher. But at certain, uh, but besides that, there was also people, I mean, just... Roasting I you? I mean, just going, I mean, just so much vitriol and negativity, just, I mean, just immature child let them comment it's still comments they're just boosting your ratings yeah but i could see the reason i bring up those i could see how people who want to get into this and start doing this they see stuff like that mm -hmm. like you were saying they don't want to post the evidence that they that they've gotten because they don't want people attacking them or they don't want to start researching because you know if they do a video project or whatever they don't want people just yeah. tearing into them and, and not pro instead of providing constructive criticism on how to be better instead of just oh, yeah. you're an idiot you don't know what you're doing blah 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 just people don't people see that negativity people see how you conduct yourself on the internet and if you don't carry yourself like an adult like a respectful individual trying to help people they're not going to have anything to do with this and especially younger people I don't think they're you know yeah it's a hard enough thing to get into anyway, especially, you know, the stigma around it where people think you're crazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. You treating people like garbage isn't going to make it any easier for people to want to get into this field. Dude, you're not opinionated about this at all, are you? No. Shit. <laughs> no. But I think it's important. It does know. get old, though. You know, if we want to, I mean, it's just people, we, like, people need to talk about it so things can get better, you know? Because it these, won't improve until people... Yeah, these trolls are... It, I, sometimes I think they're just, they're, you know, what do you call those? Like the government trolls that are paid to go in there and belittle everybody. Well, did you see those heat signatures I was talking about? Yeah. It's small, wasn't it? It's like a Dilla or something. Yeah. Hey, turn around, look at where I'm pointing this thing. I see. 
see a signature. What? I see something up on that hill. It's really very even out. It's a small, it's a small animal. Oh, really? It does. Yeah. Are there armadillos around here? I don't think so. Could be a coyote. No. Well, the third night we decided we were going to turn off the surveillance system on Eric's van. They say that, you know, the cameras put off infrared light. I don't know if it was a coincidence, but apparently the third night was the charm because we had a visitor in camp. About 1.30 or 2 o'clock, I ended up getting a text message from Coleman. He was saying that there was something outside of his tent walking around. I started looking over in that direction, and I actually saw what looked like a tall, upright shadow standing over there by his tent kind of freaked me out then it moved and i was watching to see if it would come back or move around but it actually snuck around behind me while i was focused on the area around coleman's tent it walked behind me in between eric and i's vehicles scared the crap out of me Okay, so last night, approximately around 1 in the morning, 1.30 to 2 in the morning, I heard... It was literally right after we went to bed, right? Yeah. And it was still super quiet. I heard... It sounded like kind of like a tree crack. I wrote it down on my phone because I decided I wanted to stay up and see if we heard anything, or if I heard anything. <laughs> I heard it sounded like a tree crack. Branch, what, I don't know exactly what it was. It was just a weird noise somewhere approximately that direction and so i just thought okay cool so i wrote that down on the notes on my phone and thursday i hear i'm assuming it was, it was walking in the leaves or in here uh -huh. just step 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 clear as day and that kind of freaked me out and then a few moments go by i hear something moving through here and right in front of my tent but it sounds like it's moving either on all fours or it's moving really quickly really yeah i wonder if there's any prints but i i swear to you i heard something moving through here or just something making a lot of noise through here and huh. then i hear hey look at this there's a that's not a footprint but mm -hmm. that's weird but I for sure, I heard something moving through here. Was all this stuff broke? I don't know. I wish I made note of that. That's a good question. Right there. Look at that one right... Do you see that? That one right there? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember all that being broke.
Well, keep telling your story. Well, I mean, isn't doesn't your chair look like it's been moved? Wasn't it closer? I'm pretty sure it was closer at one point, but I hear we can check the video yeah, until we we'll check the video. But I hear something clear as day slide across the ground. So I don't. It could have been my chair, but it was just. I mean, something mm. moved something, and I heard it slide across the ground. That's when I text Brian and uh, let him know what I'm hearing, because I want him to be able to see if he can see anything moving by my tent but i could see stuff from like this level down because then the, this the sky was silhouetted and i could see that pretty good and at one point i saw something that looked like it was standing right here where i'm at now by your tent move this way and that i was like oh my god and every once in a while you hear like a, you know just like little just just, I mean, that small mm -hmm. going off from like here and like here where I heard both those noises. So, yeah, that freaked me out. So, several minutes after you messaged me and then, and every time my phone would light up, it would blind me and I couldn't see. I gotcha. Because it was super bright. And that's why I said, stop texting me. <laughs> and, but then a couple of minutes after that, I was laying there on kind of looking out this way, you know, trying to see stuff, and something walked in between Eric and I's vehicles. Wow. Bipedally. And that's when I was like, and the weird thing was you'd think I would turn over and like look real fast, but it it just it just walked through just ch -ch -ch. and that's when I was just like, oh crap. I felt like somebody walked on my grave, man. It was right behind me. What I heard here was clear as day, step, 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 step. Yeah. It wasn't, whatever here was It almost looks like it came through right there. Yeah. But this sounds like the material, and this sounds approximate where I heard it, but I mean, it was clear as day. I can't duplicate the noise because I'm not heavy enough, but. Huh. Eventually, we began to pack up and get ready to go. And I can't remember whether Eric or Coleman found these other tracks sitting over here that were not there the previous night. So whatever it was, left a few prints for us to find the next morning. It was pretty cool. The prints weren't all that huge, and they were in leaf litter, so it was pretty much impossible to cast them. Okay, so those two photo footprints that we just... Coleman just photoed. These are our our prints trying to get up here and sliding back down. Whatever it was, took like three steps and was up and headed off in that direction. Holy moly. Oh man, we are headed out. Well, last night was pretty exciting. Um, we uh, had a, a visitor in camp and uh, that was that was pretty cool but uh we got up this morning we did find some footprints but nothing were castable and uh other than that it was just a real exciting time coleman had them up close and personal and then they actually ended up walking between eric's van and my vehicle which i'm not gonna lie it kind of unnerved me because i realized it was right behind me like within feet but i was inside a vehicle anyway that was that was cool <laughs> it's a good weekend cold as hell we honestly didn't see anybody all weekend except for i saw this one dude in a pickup truck was uh on the main road and he was uh going fishing because he had some fishing poles in the back so he was uh oscar mike didn't have time to fool with us but anyway we're thinking about heading up to the quick stop and get some breakfast. I'm trying to decide. Do I want bacon or biscuits and gravy? Or do I want both? Or do I want double helpings of both? 
don't know. I'm pretty hungry. I've been eating pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty light all weekend. So when you're out there in the bush, you don't eat as much as you would normally at home. So fun fact, uh, dieting tip from Red Dirt Cryptids. Get your ass off the couch and go to the woods. You'll eat a lot less. Anyway. All right. Well, I better probably pay attention and drive with both hands before I wreck. So anyway, 